seedlings grow. Speaking of Gong Sheng, he was a scholar from Minzhou, Sichuan. I went to Xi'an to take the imperial examination, rested in a hotel, bought some food and wine, and drank by myself. A tall man came in and sat down to talk to him. Gong Sheng raised his glass and urged him to drink with him, but the guest did not refuse. He called himself Mao, and his talk and laughter were vulgar and, and restrained. Because he was not very elegant, Gong Sheng treated him coldly with an arrogant attitude. After finishing the wine, he stopped buying it. Mao Sheng then said, drinking with poor scholars is really boring. He got up and went to the hotel to buy wine and came in carrying a large wine jar. Gong Sheng refused and said he couldn't drink anymore. Mao Sheng grabbed his arm and persuaded him to drink. Gong's arm was so painful that he had to drink several glasses of wine. Mao Sheng drank from the big bowl of soup and said with a smile, I'm not good at persuading others to drink. You can stay or leave as you like. Gong Sheng immediately packed his luggage and set off. After walking for several miles, the horse fell ill and was lying on the road. Gong Sheng was sitting by the roadside. When he was tired of the heavy luggage and had nothing to do, Mao Sheng arrived. After asking for the reason, he unloaded the luggage on the horse and handed it to the servant. He supported the horse's belly with his shoulders, picked it up, and walked quickly for more than 20 miles before arriving at the hotel. He put the horse down and let it eat grass in the trough. After some time, Gong Sheng and his servant arrived at the hotel. Gong Sheng was surprised and thought he was a man of God so he entertained him generously by wine and rice and let Mao Sheng eat together. Mao Sheng said, I have a big appetite and you can't fill it up. It's enough to have a full meal together. After drinking a jar of wine, Mao Sheng stood up and said goodbye. It will take some time for you to treat the horse. I can't wait any longer. I'm leaving first. So he left. Later, after Gong Sheng took the exam, he and three or four friends were invited to go to Huashan Mountain for fun. Everyone put wine and food on the ground for a feast. During the feast, Mao Sheng suddenly arrived. He held a big wine bag in his left hand and a pig's knuckle in his right hand. He threw it to the ground and said, I heard that you are here, so I came here to cheer for you. Everyone got up, treated each other with courtesy, and invited Mao Sheng to sit down quickly. The wine was drunk happily and everyone was happy. Everyone wanted to use couplets as a play. And Mao Sheng argued, It's very happy to drink alcohol without restraint. So why bother to conceive and make yourself distressed? Everyone refused to listen and issued a Jingu drinking order. And those who failed to comply would be fined three glasses of wine. Mao Sheng said, Those who have poor couplets should be punished by military law. Everyone laughed and said, the crime shouldn't be to this extent, Mao Sheng said. If I were not to be beheaded, I, a warrior, could still say a few words. Jin Sheng, who was sitting at the head table, said, The vision is absolutely empty. Mao Sheng then continued, The saliva pot hits the missing sword, and the light is red. The person sitting down pondered for a long time, but did not continue. Mao Sheng picked up the wine bottle and poured the wine himself. After a while, the links are continued downwards in order, and gradually the links become more and more vulgar. Mao Sheng shouted, That's enough. If you still want me to live, don't contact me anymore. No one listened, Mao Sheng couldn't bear it any longer, so he imitated the dragon's roar and roared loudly, making the mountains roar. He also imitated the lion dance by leaning forward and backward. The mood of poetry was disrupted. So everyone stopped the couplets and raised their glasses to drink. When they were half drunk, everyone proudly recited the articles they had written. In the examination room, praising and flattering each other, Mao Sheng really didn't want to hear this sour tone. So he took Gong Sheng's hand and fisted it. The two of them have won and lost several times each, but the reciting articles and boasting are not over yet. Mao Sheng said sternly, I'm already familiar with your articles. Articles like this can only be read to my wife at the bedside. In the public, the endless chatter is boring. Everyone felt ashamed after hearing this, and even more disgusted with Mao Sheng's rudeness, so they raised their voices and read aloud. Mao Sheng became angry, 
lay down on the ground and roared, immediately turned into a tiger, pounced on the guests and ate them, then roared, jumped over the ridge and ran away. The only survivors were Gong Sheng and Jin Sheng. Jin Sheng was the first place in this provincial examination. Three years later, when Jin Sheng was passing by Huayan again, he suddenly saw Ji Sheng on the road. He was also the one who was killed by a tiger on Mount Huashan. Jin Sheng was greatly surprised and wanted to gallop forward with his whip. Ji Sheng grabbed the horse's bridle and stopped it from moving. Jin Sheng got off his horse and asked him what he wanted to do. Ji Sheng said, Now I have become Mao Sheng's puppet. The work is very hard, I have to kill another scholar to replace me. In three days, there will be a scholar wearing Confucian clothes and Confucian crown. The scholar was bitten to death by a tiger, but the place must be at the foot of Kinglong Ridge. That is my substitute. Please invite a few more scholars there on that day. That is, to help my old friend. Jin Sheng didn't dare to defend himself, so he agreed and broke up. Jin Sheng returned to his apartment and thought about it all night, but he couldn't come up with a solution. In the end, he decided to risk breaking the agreement with Ji Sheng and let this charlatan deal with him. At this time, his cousin Zhang Sheng happened to visit him, and he told the story of his encounter with ghosts. Zhang was a well-known underachiever. Yu Sheng, a scholar from the same county, passed the exam in front of him, and he was very jealous. After hearing what Jin Sheng said, he secretly had the idea of murdering Yao Xing. He immediately wrote a letter, inviting Yao Xing to visit Kang Longling together. He put on civilian clothes, but Yao Xing didn't know what his purpose was. When they reached the halfway point of Kang Long Ridge, they laid out food and wine and respectfully invited Yao Xing to drink. On this day, it happened that the prefect also went to Kang Long Ridge. The prefect was a good friend of Zhang Sheng's father. Hearing that Zhang Sheng was at the foot of the ridge, he sent someone to call him. Zhang Sheng did not dare to go to see the prefect in civilian clothes, so he and Zhu Sheng changed their clothes and hats. Before he finished changing his clothes, the tiger suddenly pounced on him, grabbed Zhang Sheng in his mouth, and laughed. Alright, this story has come to an end. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you.